Flanagan is going to take the opening kickoff. Flanagan six and three on the season. The Thunder seven and two. The Thunder have lost to Polo and Milledgeville. Polo, the number two seed in the playoffs. Milledgeville, the number six seed in the playoffs. The Flanagan Cornell Woodland Falcons have lost once to Amboy, who is the number four seed in the playoffs, and twice to Ridgewood, who is the number three seed in the playoffs. So they have lost three games to top four seeds. The Thunder have lost two games to top six seeds as we get ready to go here with this kickoff. It's a high kick. It's going to be short. Bobbled, picked up at the 32. It's going to be first and 10 Flanagan at about the 39-yard line on the carry for the Falcons, I believe, number 24, Jackson Flahot. It's going to be first and 10 for the Falcons as they get a first chance at things here this afternoon. Once again, we're at West Carroll High School in Savannah, Illinois. It's a beautiful little town here. Brandon, it's uh, – we drove through, and I was mentioning how cool the town is as you drive through to get it, to the high school. It is a very cool town. Uh, very cool football field here at Savannah West Carroll. Old school. Ball's on the ground, a fumble. It's going to be recovered by Flanagan. On the carry was number seven, Leland Durbin. He's going to fumble the football. They're going to go for a gain of – Three, we'll make it four, a gain of four, second down and six. Second and six for the Falcons. Big first play, could have been huge for the Thunder. Falcons survive it though, and we will see a second down and six here as the game just underway. Where's the scoreboard at? Over, Over there, I can barely see right. it. Yep. Handoff up the middle. Handoff this time goes to number 21, Elijah Detweiler. A three-yard gain for number 21, Elijah Detweiler. Be third and three. Handoff up the middle will be the first first down of the contest. Clock stops, so get about to the 49-yard line. Detweiler again on the carry. Powers his way just right up the middle on the Thunder's defense. A five-yard gain. He's got eight yards on two carries. Handoff up the middle. This time it's Durbin, and he's going to go. He's at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown. A 39 or a 49 yard touchdown run for Durbin. He's got 53 yards on two carries. And with 10 18 to go in the first quarter, the Falcons strike first on a 49 yard touchdown run by number seven, Leland Durbin. They're going to try the PAT here on the kick. Looks like it's number 11. Connor Decker, he's a good one. Kick is up, and it is good. Right down the middle, had tons of leg. The kick out is good. And with 10-18 to go in the first quarter, the Falcons lead by seven. We'll take our first break of the contest, and we'll be back. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back here to West Carroll High School. In Savannah, Illinois, it's 7-0 Falcons on their first drive. They use a four-play drive, get one first down, and they have got on the scoreboard for 7-0, the lead for the Falcons. 
as we get ready to go with the kickoff here. First time as Decker going to kick off after kicking the PAT just a few moments ago. We're back underway. Left side on the return. A couple flags down, a bunch of flags down. There's flags everywhere. So we'll see what the first flag is here. As I said, a couple flags down. Holding. On the thunder. There was two of them, I believe. They're going to mark it from the first one. It'll be about first and 10 from the 17 or 18-yard line for the thunder. And uh, as we get ready to go here with the first drive for the thunder. Kick the fix the scoreboard here. It is seven to zero. And the Thunder's first offensive play is going to be a handoff right side. He's got a lot of running room. Down the sideline he goes. He's going to be tracked down from behind. It is Rafe Pickard Shinjin. Pickard Shinjin. First and 10 from the 45. From the 17 to the 45, that's a 28-yard run and the first first down of the contest for West Carroll. Handoff this time up the middle. Buckles on the carry up the middle. Second and five. I believe the ball carrier number nine that time. Buckles, Aiden Buckles. He goes for a gain of five. It brings up second down and five. Shinchin the deep set back again in the eye formation. He's going to take the pitch left side. He's got running room again. He'll have the first down and more. Runs out of bounds shy of the 40 in plus territory, he's going to go for a gain of seven or eight. Gain of seven and another first down. 35 yards on two carries for Pickard Shinjin, and it is first and ten at the 43-yard line of the Falcons for the Thunder. Hand off up the middle. Buckles breaks a couple tackles, keeps his feet moving. He'll have another first down. Down to about the 27, they're going to mark it. An 11-yard run, or about the 32, excuse me. An 11-yard run and another first down. Coming up another first and 10 for the Thunder. First and 10 for the Thunder at the 32-yard line now of the Falcons. And, Brandon, they just are matriculating the ball down the field here. Both teams' uh, running game is tip-top here in the early goings of the game for both teams. Here, a single setback this time. Fake the handoff left side on the carry. Nobody out there, but they pursue in a hurry. The ball carrier, that time number 24, Connor Townsend. Townsend on the carry, brought down by Torres. Second and five. Looked like he had a ton of room out there. Actually, I'm going to give him six. Yeah. He had a ton of room out there, but they closed in a hurry. The white jerseys got there quickly and were able to get the stop. So it's second down and four from the 30 or from the 26 for the Falcons. It's Buckholes the deep set back this time, it would appear. Townsend again, there's some movement, no flag. Dropping back, wide open downfield. It is dropped. Durbin broke it up at the last second. The pass from Harrington intended for number three, Roger LeBron, and it's knocked down, incomplete at the very last second. Very good pass defense and coverage on uh, FCW there. 
Winter Harrington tries his first pass of the day. It falls incomplete. The intended receiver was Roger LeBourne. It's going to bring up third down and four now. As they had it, the throw was a little late. If he could have led him a little earlier, it would have uh, probably went for six. Instead, it's third down and four. And Harrington's going to be back under center. Townsend in motion. The pitch is going to come out to Pickard. Shinchin, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. He's going to get a couple yards. He's going to make fourth down and two. And Brandon is probably four down territory here. It is. Uh, got about two yards to go. Probably be expecting a run up the middle, I would say. Fourth and two for the Thunder from the 26. So a big defensive play, the first big defensive play heading into the defensive play for the Falcons here as they have a fourth and two and a chance to get the ball back with a seven-point lead. Harrington under center. He's going to hand off right side Pickard Shinchin, and he's going to get – well, man, he's close. He's really close. close. We'll see, and they're going to say a first down. He's going to get two, and he needed two, and a fourth first down on this drive. Another two-yard gain. He got two two two-yard gains and enough for a first down. It'll be first and ten from just outside the 20. They're going to put it pretty much on the 20, so I want to erase that and give him three. He's got 40 yards on four carries. Ten-yard average, you'll take that. Harrington back under center. Hands off to Townsend. He had nowhere to go, and he's going to be wrapped up in the backfield. The defensive line for the Falcons won that battle on the stop, number 71, maybe number 21. Detweiler was there on the stop. I believe it's number 21. Thought it was 71 at first, but they don't have a 71 on their roster, so I'm going to go with 21. The defensive line huge on that one. Short loss. We'll call it no gain for Townsend. Going to bring up second down and a long 10. Harrington drops back this time. Looking downfield. There's LeBourne again, and it was knocked down on the far side. Once again, another pass defense by Durbin. Durbin Durbin is second pass defense. It's going to bring up third down and 10 from the 20-and-a-half-yard line of the Falcons for the Thunder. We're down in four. Is that say 455? 455. Am I blind or is that really hard to see? It is hard to see. Okay. I mean, I am blind, but. So am I, so. We might be in trouble. Hand off up the middle to Townsend. He's got some running room. He's going to be close to a first down. Give him about nine on the carry, it would appear. We'll wait and see. And it's going to bring up another fourth down for Car- for West Carroll. But uh, they moved that back a little farther than I thought they were going to. It's Man, that's way back there farther than I thought. Eight, eight yard game? They're calling it three. Should I give him seven or eight? What do you think? I'll give him eight. He's got 14 yards, a fourth and a long two here. So another fourth and two. They're going to spread them out this time. Harrington's got quarterback draw written all over this one. Here comes in motion is Buckholz. Instead, he's going to hand it off, and Buckholz and him make contact. But Buckholz breaks another tackle. He's going to go in. Touchdown, Thunder. From 13 yards out, Buckholz gets the 13-yard touchdown run, and it's 7-6 with 4-10 remaining here in the first quarter. Buckholz from 13 yards out. Hand off to Towns and he breaks out of the pile and he is in. They had him bunched up, but he bounced it outside. Townsend gets the run. And a one-point lead for the West Carroll Thunder. So this is where the debate that the Illinois eight-man fans, football fans on Facebook have is, do you go for two or do you go for one? And they went for two and got a one-point lead out of it. 
Want to say hi to Rita Hemp Hempkin. Says go Falcons. Essence is back again. Go West Carroll. And Brody Leitzen, who placed 111. Congratulations. As we get ready to go here. And it's an 8-7 lead for West Carroll. As I forget, we're off-centered with the camera here today a little bit. So we're at about the 40 on the right side of the field. So when I look up, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why are they lined up there? Why are, you know, It screwed me up about two times, but I've caught myself from saying anything. But it's got me twice. There's a nice high kick. Going to be picked up at about the 35-yard line. Breaks one tackle, and then gets stood up. There's going to be a penalty flag down behind the return by number one, Connor Reed. And we'll see what the penalty marker is here. Likely on the Falcons. It'll be their first penalty. And the flag is clear. Clear back at the 21. We'll see where they're going to mark it from. From the end of the run. Fifteen yard penalty from the end of the run. That'll bring up first and ten for the Falcons from the 15. So first and ten, the ball just about on the 15-yard line with 4.03 remaining in the first quarter. Falcons scored on Durbin's 49-yard run. They had one first down in their first drive. This time it's going to be Seth Jones on the carry. He's going to be tripped up, a gain of about five. Good defensive play over there by, I believe, number 33, Cole Harrell. A five-yard gain for Jones. Second down and five as the clock continues to run. 3.30 remaining in the first quarter. Hop in the live chat. Oh, Jones lets the ball go through his hand. He's going to fall on it. He's going to be back inside the 10 from the 20. He loses 12 or 13. We're going to lose 12 on the play is what we'll call it. He's got negative seven yards rushing on two carries now. More importantly, it's going to be third and 17 for the – the they say it's on the nine. I'll, tell, I'll give him the one yard then. Negative six yards rushing now as he – Brandon looked like he took off. Before, I mean, the snap wasn't – it was a little high, but he took off before he got the snap. He, he did. Uh, that's what I was just Oh, big play in the backfield. Durbin's going to be dropped. Sorry to interrupt oh, you there. You're good. Barron's on the stop. I believe on the stop, number 22, Austin Barron's Durbin. No gain on the play. Fourth and 16 for the Falcons. Fourth and 16, and I think there's no doubt this is a punting situation for the Falcons. The only time either team has been stopped, really, is they stopped themselves. That was the snap that went over the head of Jones that stopped this drive. There's the kick, low kind of Australian rules rugby-style kick, and a big return for Prickard Shinchin, and it's going to be all the way down to about the 30, 25-yard line, up 24-yard line, first and 10 Thunder with 154. Nine remaining, I think. Yes, 159 remaining 159. in the game. Or in the first half, first quarter. I'll get it out in a second. First and 10 from the 24. First and 10 from the 24. So almost starting this drive in the red zone are the Thunder. And they're going to spread it out again. Two wides near, two wides far. In motion comes Townsend. Handoff's going to, it's going to be try oh, reverse. Oh, it's oh. on the ground, and the Falcons might have it. Nope. It, Townsend got terrible. back on it. Ball recovered by Townsend. A loss of seven, though, to the 31 for Townsend. It's the second time that we've seen the offensive teams fumble and recover the fumbles here second this afternoon. Durbin fumbled on the first carry, didn't he? Yes, he did. So he got they got that back. That was this was a whole lot closer. There was a white jersey and a green jersey both there, but 
Right. The green jersey won the battle. It was hard to tell who uh, came up, but uh, the Thunder comes up with it and continues their offense here. Second down and 17 here for the Thunder. Handoff's going to go to Townsend on the end of round. He's going to bottle up. Oh, he's going to – nope. Thought he was going to break a couple tackles. He did not. That is number 21. Number 21, Detweiler on the stop. Yes. Townsend loses another one. We're under a minute and time's ticking away. First quarter action here, 50. Actually, that was 50 seconds. We're down to about 46 seconds now. So a couple more plays minimum here in this first quarter. Thanks for joining us here. As snap's going to go to Harrington. He looks downfield to left. He throws. It's intercepted by Durbin. Durbin has been a ball hawk in that backfield for the Falcons. He broke two up, and he's got an interception. Durbin. Fumbled a ball. He gets the ball back this time. And it's first and 10 Falcons from the 24. That's odd. That's right where the Thunder were starting from before they went backwards. Now the Falcons are going to be there starting. First and 10 with 18.3 seconds, I think, left yes. in the first quarter. And the ball's on the ground again. And I think the Falcons covered sure. up. Durbin no again. Yep. Durbin had it again. He recovered it this time. He's going to go for a gain of one. And that's going to be the first quarter. That'll end the first quarter of play. Durbin has 54 yards on four carries, but a couple fumbles. Both of them recovered by the Falcons. Please make sure to get your 50-50 tickets from the Scholastic Bowl team. Drawing at halftime after the ban. As we head to the second quarter, we'll take a break. You're watching Illinois Eight-Man Football Association presentation of IHFA playoffs here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor, and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. And welcome back as we are ready to go with the second quarter here from West Carroll High School, flip-flopping things. Flanagan will be going left to right now on your screen. Handoff actually is going to be kept by Jones. He runs around the right side. He's got a little running room. He's going to be close to a first down as we have the second down play. He's going to bring up third down, but he's got out there close to a first down. We are underway here in the second quarter. That'll bring up third and one for the Falcons from the 33. An eight-yard gain for Jones. It's third and one from the 33-yard line. Handoff's going to go to the fullback. He's going to be thrown down very hard. Detweiler thrown to the ground on the tackle. Number 55, Adam Wiest. Detweiler slow to get up and uh, trying to pull some grass out of his helmet. That's the kind of face plant that causes a concussion. I would not see them be surprised to see his slow as he got up, Brandon, to take him out of the game. You're correct. Yeah, he was uh, slow getting up, but he did get up. Let's see uh, what he has in store here. Seven-yard gain, another first down for the Falcons. He's back in the fullback position. Eye formation behind Jones. He's going to look to pass him. A pump fake, and it's going to be underthrown. Intended for Reed and almost intercepted there on the coverage was Riker Badamilja. Badimlia. Badimlia, I, I apologize. I'll try to get that right. 
Hey, this guy right here has got a big hat. Check that thing out. I, I seen that whenever he was coming up. I want one of those. That's a sweet hat. I'm, it's probably about as big as my head, actually, but that's the first time I've ever seen one of those in person. Anyway, let's get back to the game. I formation backfield. Hand off to Durbin, and he's met in the backfield. Right at the line of scrimmage, actually. Another big play by Barons. No gain on the play, so an incomplete pass by Jones and no gain by Durbin, and it's going to bring up third down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Third and 10 for the Falcons from the 40. First pass was intended for Reed. If you watched our broadcast or our tape delayed broadcast of the game from the Falcons and West Prairie, that game was all about the pass. They were 7 of 8 for 228 yards, and Reed had a whale of a game. In motion goes Reed. Jones has Reed in the flat. Going to go downfield. It's well under throw, and it's intercepted. And Reed's going to make the tackle. Bamidja. Bud Amilja on the interception. Jones has an INT, so both quarterbacks have one. It's going to be first and 10 from the 49 for the Thunder now as we have 9.37. I need a phonetic pronunciation sheet. I, I was about ready to say I'm glad sometimes that you're calling play by play instead of me because some of these names are just hard. Harrington's going to hand off to Shinjin. He's going to go for a gain of five, field. but there is a flag down, as Brandon said. It's holding on the Thunder, their second holding penalty. Hold will be on the thunder. And it will bring it back. It will be first down and 20. And I, I tell you what, the game we, I called last night had so many plays behind the sticks for St. Thomas Moore. The fact they only lost that game by two was really pretty amazing. We're in the second quarter here, 9.30 remaining, I think. I believe that 9 30. Is it a nine or an eight? I, I'm not sure. I think it's a nine. The sun is right kind of behind the scoreboard, and it's hard to see. There's the handoff up the middle. That's Buckles, I believe. It is. He'll get five, six of the ten back. It'll be second down and 14. Second and 14. Second and 13 from the 46. Actually, he got seven. It is second and 13. They're giving the announcer a hard time because he thought that first stick was the down marker, first down marker. Sometimes you forget, Brandon, yeah. that they're, they're behind the sticks rather than in, in the you middle do. of them. Sometimes up oh, in the backfield, a big-time play. <laughs> Who is that? It's Detweiler. And he tackled both of them. He had got Harrington and Pickard Shinchin. It's a loss of six, and they are back to third and 19. Detweiler with a huge play. Third and 19 from the 40 now. Clock running, 8.15 remaining here in the first half. Thanks for joining us in the live chat. We appreciate it. It's really hard to read today. We might try to catch some of it at halftime if we can. Third down and 19 for the Thunder as they go to their wide spread formation. And got a whistle. Delay a game? Boy, that seemed fast. It did. Three penalties for 25 yards now on the Thunder. That's going to make it third and 24. They have shown the ability here early in this game to break some big plays, so we'll see if they're able to do that. Shinjin in motion, takes it, oh, double reverse, pitch back now. Oh. He's got an open receiver. Reed is there, oh. and 
He did a good job. You got to give number 13, Jackson Torres. He could have ran right through. But but Ilmo Ija, I can't. I don't even know. I can't even get it. Badimlaja, Badimlaja. That's it. Sounds uh, good. He could have ran right through him, but he held up and then didn't face guard. He tried to turn around to see the ball. That was a pretty good defensive play, considering how far he was trailing from behind on what what turned out to be a back shoulder throw. So they're going to punt here. Are the Thunder first punt of the game? Actually, second punt of the game. Now they're going to fake it. Shinjin is going to get hit. He's going to stay in bounds. Ball gets loose. No, he he just stayed in bounds. Shinjin held on to it. He's going to go for a gain of four after all that. Stopped by Simons for the Falcons. Simons gets the stop. It's going to be first and ten Falcons at the 39-yard line of the Thunder. So for the first time tonight, the Thunder or the Falcons are starting in Thunder territory and plus territory at the 39. I should say this afternoon with 7:15 remaining here in the first half. I formation, read wide to the left. Durbin a deep setback. Handoff goes to Detweiler. He breaks a tackle, gets down near the 30-yard line. Gain of about eight, it would appear. Bring up second and two. LeBorn and a few other Thunder in on that tackle. Gain of seven on the play. Second and three from 31 for the Falcons. Second down and two. Clock running here. Falcons got the ball first in the first half. So the Thunder will have it in the second half. Durbin, boy, he's just getting bottled up, but he breaks that first initial tackle and is going to go for a gain of three in a first down. First and 10 from the 38-yard line or 28-yard line, excuse me, of the Thunder for the Falcons. Hand off to Detweiler again. He's going to be bottled up a lot faster this time. He's going to be dropped down at the 25-yard line. Big play among others in there on the stop of number 74, Logan Thulin. And a gain of three. Brings up second down and seven. Second and seven, ball in the 25. Second down and seven, ball in the 25 of the Thunder for the Falcons. Clock continues to run down inside six minutes at 535 left in the first half. In the shotgun now is Jones. He's going to keep it. He runs left. Good block on the outside, but better defense. He keeps moving in and out over there, and he's going to get a few yards. But there was a good block, but the guy getting blocked, I couldn't see who it was, did a great job of just holding his position, and Jones couldn't find a good way, good way to get around. He's going to go for a gain of four. It's third and three. He did everything to stay on his feet and it took three uh, Thunder players to finally bring him down. So the I formation again. This time Durbin is the fullback. Jones under center. Hands off goes to Durbin. He just lowers his head, pushes forward. Down to the 15, a gain of six and a first down. Durbin on the carry for the Falcons. That'll be good for a first and ten. Down marker set. So it'll be clock running with 423 to go in the first half. Falcons have it first and ten at the Thunder's 15-yard line. Pitch comes near side to I believe that's out there is number 12, Logan Ruddy. Ruddy with the carry, Buckles on the stop. Logan Ruddy on the carry. Buckles is going to drop him for a loss of one. Bring up second and 11 for the Falcons from the 16. Second and 11. (laughs) 
You're right. There is not many better kickers, especially at this level. And Decker, if he's not getting some D1 looks for kicking, I would be surprised, or at least some, you know, western size looks or something like that. There's Detweiler with the handoff up the middle. He's going to go down near the 10 to the 11. He'll get five. It'll bring up third down and six. Timeout on the field, charge to the Falcons, or to the Thunder, excuse me. First timeout of the game, called by either team. It's going to be called by the Thunder. Still eight to seven. The Falcons are driving, though. Third down and six at the 11. 320 to go. You know, and you, you wonder, Brandon, about this timeout by the Thunder, probably twofold. You want to have some time left for a chance to drive because if, if you can get the ball back either with them scoring or without them scoring, you get the ball first in the second half. If you can make a drive here and get some points at the end of the first half, it doubles you up. Absolutely. This is a big uh, play for the Falcons. As you said, they'll be uh, coming out at halftime with the ball, so they're going to try to punch it in here. So the Thunder took the time out there, and Durbin's going to come out to the wide side. No, that's Reed, excuse me, out to the wide side. Durbin's a deep setback. Detweiler the fullback. Jones under center. They load the box. The handout's going to go to Detweiler. Not much this time. Maybe a couple yards. It's going to bring up fourth down from just inside the 10. Bring up third and five from the ten. Fourth and five from the he ten. He didn't get all the way to the nine, so we'll give him one. He's got 32 yards. Fourth and a short five for the Falcons, and Decker's going to come on to attempt the field goal here to give his team a lead. Jones the holder. Jones is counting, making sure they got enough players. Decker on. He's kicking into the wind a little bit. It's into the wind and kind of coming across left to right on him. Here's the hold. Here's the kick. It's up. Is it long enough? It is. It's good. Decker gets the field goal and gives his team the lead. And as we were saying, it's important here to get on the board if you are the Falcons, and that's what they do with that three-point field goal. Yeah, it's important because the Thunder are going to but, – but that timeout by the Thunder now looks really smart, right, because you get 232 to make a drive, plus you get the ball when you come out in the second half. So that timeout to save 30 or 40 seconds there may end, may end up playing huge into this game. But right now it's 10-8 to eight after the Decker – field goal as it is with 232 remaining the Falcons retake the lead at 10 to, to 8 how many yards was that where'd they kick he was at the 10 so 17 27 yards yep. here's the kick deep Shinshin on the return. He's pushed his sleeves up. That screwed me up for a second. 2.32. And it's 10 to 8. And got a Falcon down, I believe. Slow getting up is number 24, Jackson Flott. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him the way he's walking off the yeah. field. First and ten thunder from the well, That might be seven. Coach Reed. Didn't tell that was Coach Reed putting a hand on the helmet there. First and ten thunder at their own 30, technically probably 35. We'll call it the 36-yard line. First and ten. I formation. Buckholes on the carry. He's going to be wrapped up. Brought down after a gain of about five. Durbin, I believe, on the stop. It was. He's going to get five. It'll bring up second down and five. 
Boggles on the carry for the Thunder. That will bring up second and five from the 41. 34 yards on four carries for Buckles. Well, that's a short five the way they marked it. It's almost second and six, but we gave him five, so we'll keep it. Shinchin now on the carry. He'll have a first down as he goes all the way down to the 50. A nine-yard gain. That will bring up the Thunder first down. First and ten for the Thunder. That's their first down, though, Brandon. Their first first down since the first drive of the game. Wow, well, and that is correct. Um, let's see what they do here. One minute, 30 seconds left here in the first half. Shinchin's going to break and it outside. We'll switch his arms. Or not, Buckles. And he's going to go inside the 20. And the clock will stop. Buckles from the 50. Down to the 19, 18 yard line, a 32 yard run. 66 yards on five carries. More importantly, a first down with 118 remaining. Maybe 115. 115. Hand off to Shitchen. He's going to be upended this time on the stop. Number 13, Jackson Torres. Shinchin is going to get a nice gain, though. It ends up being about a four yard gain. It's going to bring up second down and six. Timeout on the field, charge to the Falcons. It'll be their second timeout. Hey, who you're going to vote for is none of my business, but I vote we all head back to the concession stand to grab ourselves some of that hot, cold pork. Second timeout called by the Thunder. They'll have one timeout remaining. I'm going to say hi to some people in the Samantha Jackson says, let's go FCW. Rita Hemker, way to go FCW. Hold them now. As it's going to be second and six from about the 14 yard line. 104 remaining, one timeout left for the Thunder. Different deep setback this time is number 31. That's Gillen. No, number 30, excuse me. He's going to be wrapped up. It's actually McGinnis, Tyler McGinnis, I believe, number 30. That's his first carry of the game. It is. That'll bring up third and three for the Thunder from the 11. West and the final timeout. Sorry about that. Oh, Go ahead. No, you're good. I was just going to say that West Carroll timeout is using West their Carroll. final timeout. So no more timeouts remaining for the Thunder. Falcons do have all of them. I doubt that they'll use one here with 47.4 seconds left. Three and four. Third down and four. It's a short four. Well, you can tell when the announcer says something really good and the whole crowd just goes, oh, and turns and looks. Yeah. That's how you can tell when the announcer's doing his job well right there. You may not always like what a good announcer says, but you always hear what a good announcer says, and that's the key. Harrington fakes the handoff. He's rolls. He's got runner in the flat. Townsend oh. can't hold on. And out in and out of his hands. Incomplete. And it's going to bring up fourth down and four. You know, oddly enough, both teams have passed a couple times. We have not had a completed pass in this half, except for to the other team. Both teams have completed one to the other team, but none to themselves. Not in a hurry here, but they're going to hand off quick. Handoff's going to go to Buckholz. He's going to have the first down, it would appear. He's going to be close. Looks like he has it. He does have it. He's going to go for a gain of five. This is a huge play right here. Stopped. Oh, the ball's out. He reeled it back in, though. And he's going to have to get up in a hurry. 20 seconds left. That was Buckholz again. He goes for a gain of one. This will be the last play probably. Buckholz cuts it back. He's going to be stopped. Oh, he falls forward in for a touchdown. Buckholz has broken several tackles today. And he gets in for one there with 3.3 seconds left from two yards out. 
What a run and a huge momentum going into the half. We were saying how important it was for FCW to score, and they did, but then uh, the Thunder come right back and score and take the lead. McGinnis in for the two. Oh, flag down. The ball carrier flag on the play. Is a flag down. It's going to be a hold on to Thunder. I don't want to see what I saw last night. We'll talk about that at halftime. So, Buckholtz, a two yard run. Penalty on the two point conversion, which was good, but they're going to get a chance to do for a two point conversion from the 13 yard line. Now, that was might have been a procedure, but they didn't call it. End of the flat. Townsend is open. He underthrew him that time, and it's. Incomplete, pass fails. And it makes the score 10 to 14 to 10. The Thunder on top now. A huge turn of events with 9.3, I think that's nine, right? It's nine, right? Yes. Okay. I'm getting some help from the fans now, too. They can probably – they're a little, she's a little closer than me, so I'll take that as a easier-to-see thing there. I had just looked up, and I thought that it was 3.3 .3 until you said something, actually. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, too, but I saw is 9.3. So, with 9.3 seconds left, the Thunder score on a two-yard run by Buckles, and it's 14-10. to 10. Probably a squib quick squib kick situation here, Brandon, just to make sure you don't give up a return, you think? Or I and you do see a lot of that in high school football, especially in eleven man, um, eight man I haven't seen much of, so I'm kind of interested here. And they're gonna bring up four to the line of screen or to the front line and have two at two different layers in the back in case they try the squib or an onside kick here. It's going to be a squib kick. Oh, and it's going to be caught up front. What a hands. And it's going to be first and 10 at the 44-yard line with 5.7 seconds left. Who is that? Great hands by oh, number It's number 22. 22. That's uh, Emmett Haraney. Haraney, what, man, that thing was a shot, and he just sucked it up like a Hoover vacuum and runs it back for another six yards. And that really, with 5.7 seconds left, gives – the Thunder a shot to try to take some advantage here and make something happen. Reed is going to go left. Ruddy is out to the left. Durbin is beside Jones in the shotgun. Timeout is going to be called by Flanagan Cornell Woodland. That tells me that they had an idea. But it looked like the Thunder were kind of in a prevent defense, and they and maybe Coach Reed said, ah, I don't think that's going to work, so let's uh, change our plan here. This <laughs> announcer loves to talk about food, and he's he making does. me hungry. <laughs> making me hungry. I wonder if he delivers. He's doing all this talk, and he ought to deliver us some food. That's and what I'm thinking. He doesn't have too far to deliver, so no, that's right. as well. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So here comes Flanagan back to the – Line of scrimmage. Share this link if you would. Let fans know where you're watching from. And we'd love to see who you're cheering for. Here's going to be the snap. Jones is going to look to throw. He's going to roll left. He's crossed the line of scrimmage, so he can't throw. That's going to be the last play of the get half. And that'll run out the play. Jones is going to go for a gain of seven. But that will bring it into the first half. 14-10, Thunder with the lead at the half. Jones goes for a, four, a seven yard gain. We'll give him seven. He's got 13 yards on five carries. Boy, this is as good as, as anticipated, I think. 14 to 10, the Thunder with a score at the 9.3 second mark remaining in the second quarter. They get the ball first coming out in the second half. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a little bit. You're watching 
the Illinois eight-man presentation of the IHFA playoffs here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Oh, welcome back. We're here with Adrian McGregor. Adrian, you're a Macomb guy. Yes. So you're living in Macomb, working at MDH. Yes. What's your position? So I'm the vice president of clinical and support services here at the hospital. I have about 120 employees that roll up my direction through the organizational chart and probably the easiest way to explain. Um, so I have a great, great group of department directors that work for me. So areas like radiology and lab and physical therapy and cardiopulmonary services. Uh, those are kind of the main areas that roll my way. And then on the support side, pretty much all things with the, the plant, the facilities, keeping it clean, construction, all of that rolls up in my direction as well. So I never uh, am bored, and I have plenty to do every day. So I just sometimes it feels like I just need more daylight than I need work. Um, but this is a great organization, and I, I work with some of the best people in this community, and I'm, I'm proud of that, mostly proud of all that they are and all that they do and the employees and what they contribute to the organization. We have a great group here. Well, two things that caught my attention in what you mentioned. There's been a lot of construction yes. going on, so you've had a lot to deal with. Maybe we could hit on that. Sure. But I think I don't know that in any of the times that I've done these interviews that we've talked about keeping the facility clean. Yes. I think those are the forgotten yes. heroes of this place, right? Because yes. if any place needs to be clean, yes, it's here. Yes. How how important and how much effort goes into keeping a hospital clean? Well, I can tell you a tremendous amount of effort is uh, made at keeping the facility clean. And just to give you an idea of the complexity of that, um, we have 14,000 visits a year in our emergency department, for instance. Everybody that comes to the emergency department may is most likely having a bad moment of their day or could be a game changer for their year or even beyond. And so um, obviously that high volume that equates to 40 or 50 patients a day, um, you gotta have a, a clean place for every patient coming in hour by hour, minute by minute. And so that area just alone has to be kept clean. But then when you expand out to, we have approximately 800,000 square feet that needs to be kept clean throughout the entire hospital. That's a lot of feet. We do have a lot of uh, a lot of employees engaged in that area. Jimmy Rogers actually oversees that area and then some, and so he has put together a team uh, within our environmental services department to ensure cleanliness within the four walls of the hospital alone, but then also partners with several independent contractors that uh, work on some of our business. Uh, buildings or our physician buildings in uh, other clinics that we have that aren't even located in Macomb. And so he and I have worked closely together over the past three years on this. And the, it, it was a struggle during COVID for sure, because you want to ensure that every area is cleaned, not only daily, but at times within every hour, if not more. And so it is a valiant effort um, it's so important that Medicare watches for any type of hospital acquired infection that could be picked up from the hospital. So our job is to stay clean, keep clean, and be even cleaner than mom or grandma would ever want you to have. So, so a lot more than washing hands. It, it it really is, and hand washing is is part of that as well. In our infection control department. Um, who would have thought that within healthcare, that keeping your hands cleaned every hour, every day, after every and even during patient interactions could be a game changer um, with uh, preventing further infection. And we watch it very, very closely. And of course, everywhere you go, you see not only sinks and patient care errors, but hand gelling right. in and throughout that. And so um, we have to, it, it's what we do. It's not, oh, wow, that's a lot. It's what you do in healthcare. You have to do it. It takes care of patients. It takes care of practitioners. Um, it is basic and fundamental, but when you do it, the outcomes are pretty clear. You help patient care. Um, you prevent infections from happening that shouldn't have happened, number one. Number two is 
your staff stay healthier as well. Which is key in today's world. Absolutely. Adrian, I greatly appreciate you coming and talking. And we just touched on some of the stuff that you deal with on a daily basis. So I'm sure we can talk to you again about some other things. You bet. But it was fun talking about the things that people kind of, I think, forget about a little bit and get left behind. We talk about the doctors and the nurses all the time. We don't talk about the people that keep that. You bet stuff rolling so i appreciate you being here and thank you so much you it soon. was wonderful thank you we'll be right back after this and welcome back i'm here with emily alden now and emily patient advocate is that right yes that's correct that sounds like a title that encompasses a whole lot can you let's first put it in simple words if you can and then we'll we'll kind of go in depth with it a little bit yes um, as the patient advocate there is a lot to do in the role Um, but it's a fantastic opportunity. So generally speaking, I will help patients. I will talk about the service that they have here and just in general measure the patient experience for the entire organization. Well, speaking of knowing the entire organization, kind of the theme has been everybody knows everybody at MDH because you're a smaller rural hospital, even though MDH offers a lot. You literally have to probably know everybody or most everybody because you need to know what each thing's going to happen if if that patient's dealing with it. Yes, that's very true. It's uh, when I first stepped into the role about a year ago, it was really an interesting and fantastic opportunity to get to know all of the departments, how they work, um, how they work together and individually, and just to see the the well-oiled machine. Well, patient care, obviously at a hospital is key. You're a key part of that. What is what is it about patient care at MDH that makes MDH special? Service excellence internally to provide the best patient care is top of mind here for all of our staff across every single level, every single department, and the organization as a whole. It's a big focus, so we make sure that we take care of our patients um, and that we, they have the best experience possible. We're very open to feedback. We always want to improve in areas that we can improve. So we always have open ears. We always appreciate the feedback that we receive. You are working with all departments. And when a patient comes in, let's say they come into the ER, and then they come to ICU, and then they go to the floor, you, your job kind of is to let the patients know what you can do, right, or what you offer, what they can do. Am I, am I missing that? Is that correct? Yes, actually, our case management department is instrumental with that side of things. Um, Every once in a while, I'll step in and just check in on patients, see how their experience overall is going to collect that feedback and see if we can implement any changes to make it even better. So you deal with patients in so many different departments, and really they can go all the way from getting here in the ER to physical therapy on the way out, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So MDH has a lot to offer. Our patients. So while you're here, if you're if you're just running in for some outpatient tests, whether it's lab work or visiting our radiology department, um, convenience clinic, visiting your primary care provider over at MDH Family Clinic, emergency room, um, labor and delivery. There are so many different departments that work so well together, and our team is a family. The organization in itself is a family, and so everybody does a great job at trying to understand what departments do that aren't their own so that we can make it seamless experience for our patients well and then as a patient advocate right you just kind of all all that together and look at it right and then see as patient a comes through what can we do to make patient b who might follow them a little bit better next time absolutely so what as you do that what kind of things do you look for i mean what i would imagine with mdh as it continues to improve Mm -hmm. you start looking for smaller things right so the the obvious things are maybe gone so then you start looking at little things to to make the 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 sometimes the worst experience of their life right a little bit better as they work through yes yes most definitely so you never know what kind of day somebody's having when they walk through our doors and you don't know what they're necessarily here for so it's important to keep an open mind and take a look at what can we ask them that's specific to their experience? Why are they here? Comfort them and make sure that we ask the right questions so that we can purposefully pull out information that we can work on. Yeah, and that's, I think we've talked a lot about different things from different people. You're, besides Bill, the CEO, you're the, you're the one person that kind of helps with, like, 
it gets your hands in a little bit of everything as far as the patient is concerned. Everybody's talked about it being a family, and you've even mentioned it being a family. Does the fact that everybody knows everybody as far as employees from, from the CEO down to the CNAs, does that kind of make your job a little bit easier? Absolutely. When you're a family, you care about each other, and we are all here for one purpose, and that is to provide the best experience for our patients that we possibly can. So when you are a tight-knit family, it's it's just great to be we're – we're a community, a family, a community, and we are here to serve our patients. And when everybody has that one purpose, it, it just – it's a great feeling. Well, Emily, I appreciate you stopping and talking to us and keep fighting for the patients. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. We'll be back after this. And welcome back here as we get ready to go with the second half, the three minutes of warm up time. We're put back on the clock. Not a whole lot of stats here, Brandon. The Falcons, 20 carries for 107 yards. Durbin has seven carries for 63. Detweiler, Seven carries for 32. Jones, five for 13. And Ruddy, one for negative one. Jones is 0 for 2 with an interception. That's the stats. For the Thunder, not a whole lot there either. They have 23 carries for 141 yards. Uh, they have Pickard Shinchin, eight carries for 51. Buckles has eight carries for 74. Townsend, six carries for 13. McGinnis, one carry for three. Harrington is 0 for 4, I have him. He threw one late, I didn't write down. So he's 0 for 5 with an interception. It seems like Pickard has more, actually. But, I mean, he's had some uh, very nice runs here in the first half. He yeah. said he has 54 yards. 51. He, 51. He's 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 had flashier runs, but Buckholz has had a touchdown run and and uh, he he is uh, I don't know if Buckholz has been a more successful running back. At least he's caught my attention more often. We'll tell you the score is 14 to 10. The scoring plays were this at the 10-18 mark of the first quarter. The Falcons scored on their first drive, a 49 run yard run by Durbin. Decker had to kick. It was seven nothing. Then Buckholz scored on a great run from 13 yards out at the 4-10 mark of the first quarter. Townsend had the two-point conversion run. It was 8-7. Thunder after that. In the second quarter with 2.32 to go, a 27-yard field goal by Decker. It was 10-8. And then with 9.3 seconds left, Buckholz scored from two yards out. The pass failed. It's 14-10. And we talked about Brandon why that was so big, in large part because the Thunder get the ball first here to start the second half. Absolutely. Uh, it was huge. Now uh, we're getting ready for a second half. Uh, I believe that we're going to see pretty much just like we did in the first half, uh, a bunch of uh, ground game. And uh, if you score, here we come scoring too. I, I, th I don't see that changing here in this afternoon's contest. No, it's been monkey see, monkey do, hadn't it? Here, you know, you turn the ball over, we turn the ball over. You throw an interception, we throw an interception. You score a touchdown, we're going to score some points. It's just kind of been that way, hasn't it? It's been whatever you do, I can do better. Absolutely. Or try to has. anyway. And actually, it has been whatever you can do, I can do better. The Falcons scored a touchdown and got a field goal or a PAT. So the Thunder said, well, we score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion. Yep. And then the next time, Decker kicks a field goal, and they drive back down and get a touchdown. So uh, it is a 14-10 game as we get ready to go with the second half. As I said, the Thunder will get the ball first here in the second half. The Thunder ended up with seven first downs in the first half. The Falcons had four. The Falcons had just one penalty for 15 yards. The Falcons had four penalties for 35 yards. Three of those were holding penalties. Wind picking up a little bit here. That's what, what I was uh, just about ready to say also. It's a little chilly out here. I this second half needs to go fast so that we can get in where it's warm, right? Right. I think I have just enough uh, clothes to keep me warm. I should have dressed a little bit warmer, not thinking that we're, we were headed to the northwestern part of the state from 
the west central part of the state. So. Tossing up some football. Hey, I almost caught a football. Hey, I want a football. Where's my football? Nobody threw me a football. Northwestern part of the state, and it's uh, up here a ways. Two hours and 20 minutes from me, about three hours from you, right? Yeah. Yep. As it will be the Thunder back to receive Buckholes, and Shinchin is back there deep. The up back looks to be number 20, Stephen Tostado. And also over there, number five, Jacoby Cooper. Second half of round one. Decker on the kick. He's got the wind behind him. I'd like to see him sail this one into the end zone. What do you say? I would like to see it. We see haven't if, seen that yet. See if Decker can put some leg into this one. He does. Keeps it low, though. It's going to take a nice bounce. Buckholz is going to pick it up. He's got running room. As he picked that up in a hurry, he might go. Decker is the only one to slow him down, and he can't break. He breaks the tackle. Buck holds it to 10. Five. Touchdown, Thunder. As we're just underway in the third quarter, and the Thunder take off the opening kickoff from about, what would you say, the 25-yard line? Yes, the we'll, 25. We'll call it 75 yards on the kickoff return. And the Thunder have a two-score lead up 20 to 10. Guinness, oh, big face mask. There comes the flag. Man, that was a huge face mask. I don't think it was intentional, but it was a big one. Personal foul face mask, half the distance to the goal. That was a big one. That's the kind where the helmet gets spun sideways and your head stays there. 11.46 to go in the third quarter. Seventy-five yard kick return by Buckholz. And Townsend gets met in the backfield as he ran into Harrington, and then he's going to be dropped by Durbin and friends in the backfield. So the run is no good. Under stop short. We were both wanting to see a kick off into the end zone. It didn't make it to the end zone, but it was a nice long deep kick, and it made him Put in a whole lot of work for that touchdown. Took off 14 seconds here at the beginning of the third quarter. Want to say hi to Jennifer Coster. Says, way to go, West Carroll. Great teamwork. Justin F. Says, yes, the game has started, Justin. Well, it has now anyway. Ellie Leitzen says, go, well, West Carroll. Went down and got Ashley a pickle sickle for her birthday. <laughs> So with 11.46, or is that 45 or 46? 46. 46 remaining in the third quarter. Thunder take full advantage of their opening possession. Reed with it at about the 19-yard line. He breaks a tackle. Bounce. Oh, what a stiff arm. He's just getting spread across the field, though. After all that running, it's going to be a six-yard return. It'll be first down Falcons at their own 25-yard line. You know, we do have a flag about the 50. Well, he picked it up. Now he's putting it back. Oh, they, Falcons from the 25. they did. The official did wave something off. I couldn't see what he called. It's going to be a hold, I would have guessed, from where it was at. It is a 10-yard penalty on the Falcons. They've got two penalties now for 25 yards. First and 10 at the 15-yard line for Flanagan, Cornell, Woodland who needs to make something happen here. Hand off to Detweiler. He's going to be close to a five-yard gain. They are going to give him five. It'll be second down and five. 
will bring up second and five from the 20 for the Falcons. So this is big time response time for the Falcons as they are down by 10 at 20 to 10. And West Carroll trying to make a statement. Some people questioning whether how good they were. Seth Jones, a high snap. He's going to reel it in. He's going to break one tackle. It's going to be a gain of about three or four. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like he's going to gain three. It'll be third down and two. That was almost identical to the snap that went over his head earlier. He gathered that one in. Detweiler now is going to get the carry. He's going to push the pile. It's still moving forward. He's going to go for a gain of seven, six. A gain of six. Detweiler on the carry for the Falcons. And a first down. Third and two. Handoff to Durbin. And the Falcons trying to step up the tempo here a little bit. A gain of six for Durbin. It's second down and four. Durbin a handoff again. Breaks a couple tackles, dives over his own player. <laughs> from, the, from the 35 to the 46. An 11-yard gain and a first down. That was a nice run, an entertaining run. I thought we'd get a bigger reaction from the fans and the players. Than Problem was, it was his own player that tackled him. Pitch is going to go to Durbin this time. He's going to turn it upfield and get another first down, unless they mark him out of bounds earlier. Durbin on the carry. From the third 46 to the 44. They give it a first down. They are not allowing the Thunder to get any kind of substitutions here. They just keep pushing the issue. Detweiler that time going to be slow to get up. Timeout charge to the Falcons. One yard gain for Detweiler. He's got 44 yards on 10 carries. First time out of the half called and I think it'd be safe to say, Brandon, that that just came simply because of the tempo and the tempo change that has came here in this second half by the Falcons. Absolutely, I agree with that. The timeout on the field. Thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate it greatly. Three other I-8FA games going on today. The winner of this game will play Polo. Flanagan wins. It'll be at Flanagan. If West Carroll wins, it'll be at Polo. Second down and nine. Pitch out to Dirt. No, it's going to be a pass. Throwing downfield. He's got a receiver. Reed makes the catch. Nice effort. Nice catch. I think catch. that was Ruddy on the throw. Ruddy's pass is complete. We'll bring up a first and goal for the Falcons. From the 39 or from the 44? For the 43, actually, For, yep. to the 14. Durbin on the carry. Not much. Durbin on the carry wrapped up by a host of thunder. 43 to the 14 is 29 yards. Yes. Yes. 29 yards. Ruddy on the 29 yard completion. First passing, first down. No gain for Durbin. He's got 90 yards now and 11 carries. Reed out wide right, Durbin a deep setback. Detweiler behind Jones under center. Eye formation. Hand off to Durbin right up the middle. He bounces off a tackler, bounces off another, and he's going to go in for in. the score. Durbin Touchdown the from 14 yards out for Durbin. And the Falcons answer, and I can't see the clock, 7.59. 7.59.
Decker going to be on to kick again. This is a big one. This will put them down by three and make a field goal a tying, tying score here if they can make this field goal here. Kick is up. Kick is good. Right down the middle. Decker's kick is complete. 14-yard run by Durbin. Decker with the kick. And it's 17 points now for the Falcons. 20 to 17 is the score. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. You're watching TSSR, if I can find a mouse in the sunlight here. Smoking on the premises is strictly prohibited. Be right back after this. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. And welcome back here. 20 to 17 is the score. As we are moving through this third quarter, 7.59 to go. Both teams have scored a touchdown. And we are trying to see who gets to play polo. Will it be West Carroll at polo or will we at polo at Flanagan? We're going to find out in just a few minutes. Here's the kick, a deeper kick. Shinjin's going to have it. He bobbles it inside the five. He picks it up at about the four. He's going to come outside. He might get to the edge. He is to the edge, but here comes Decker. Ooh. A big hit by Decker and trailing him, Deck, tracking him down as well from behind. Taking a good angle was number 13. That's Jackson Torres, but Decker came and laid a Pat McAfee-style hit on him Absolutely. on the sideline. Didn't have quite the same effect, but it looked about the same. That's my second Pat McAfee reference of the weekend, by the way. I, I heard it earlier when I was on the phone on the way here. Yeah, it's uh, we'll uh, see if it continues here. Here we go. It is... The Thunder, their first offensive play. The Ooh. ball is bobbled, and somehow he holds on to it. Buckholz is just having a game, folks. He is. And he finally is going to be brought Last down. Carrier, short gain the play, up Looks like a gain of about five for Buckholz. He's got nine carries for 79 yards. Second down and five. Clock running, 725 to go here in the third quarter. Great football game here this afternoon at West Carroll High School in Savannah. This IHFA playoff presentation brought to you by the Illinois Eight Man Football Association. Shinshkin and the outside is going to be run out of bounds. Jones is finally going to help bring him down. Shinshkin is going to go for a gain of seven, eight yards on the play and a first down. First, first down of the second half for the Thunder with 6.47 remaining. I, I will tell you that in their defense that, uh, I mean, they ran a kickoff back, so they didn't really have a first drive. Right. Buckholz, he's going to be stopped. Coming in, laying a pretty good hit from the defensive backfield was Durbin. Jones was there also and others, but it's going to be a two- or three-yard gain. We'll call it a three-yard gain. 82 yards now for Buckles. Clock running, 6-10 remaining in the third quarter. Harrington a pitch out to Shinchin, spreading him out, but he's going to get out of bounds across the 45. Torres on the stop for the Falcons. See where they mark it. Another two, three, another two, maybe one. What do you say? I gave, I gave him a three, so. Yeah, I'd give him two. two. It's a long five. Harrington under center. Pitch is going to come out to Buckholz. Buckholz turns the corner. 
Well, he just breaks tackles. He gets close to the line to the line to gain. Really nice Bunch block by number 24 from West Carroll. Yeah, Townsend with the block. Detweiler, Ruddy, and others out there also out trailing to play number 63 lineman Aiden Radke going out a gain of four for Buckles it's fourth and one they're going for it at the 50 yard line handoff right up the middle and he's going to break it Shinshin is going to go for a gain of six and a first down Torres on the stop for the Falcons. That'll bring up a Torres first made a literal down. touchdown saving tackle there because Shinshin got through the line of scrimmage and he was just starting to straighten up and take off running when Torres made the stop to keep him from going into the end zone from 50 yards out. 425 remains here in the third quarter. Clock running. First and 10, 44 yard line of the Falcons for the Thunder, Buckholz again, and there's a flag comes in from behind. It's going to be, it's going to be something. I don't know if it's a hold or if it might be some sort of a personal foul. It is a hold on West Carroll. Holding will be on the Thunder. They've got five penalties for 45 yards. So it'll bring up first down and 20, and that's a huge first penalty because Buckholz had more than half of the yardage needed for a first down. He only called it from one yard past the line of scrimmage. It's a nine yard penalty. Clock should start running. Harrington back under center, high formation. Shinshin to the deep setback. Townsend the fullback. Fake handoff. Harrington back, the lefty. He's got an open receiver. He's going to catch this one. He's going to go for Durbin's going to track him down. The pass completed to LeBourne. The is from the Thunder. 47 down inside the 30 to the 26 27 yards on the completion to LeBourne first completion of the game for the Thunder and they have a first down through the air first and 10 at the 26 yard line Oh, the ball's on the ground. Harrington picks it up. He's still got time. He's going to be tracked down from behind. Well, I thought for a second it was going to end up working out all right. Coming around to make the tackle was Bresden Simons. It's going to be a loss of four for the quarterback, Harrington, and the Thunder. That's Harrington's first carry. Second down and 14 for the Thunder. Clock running, three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Harrington fakes the handoff. He's going to look downfield again. LeBourne. And there's pass the pass interference. interference. That time the ball underthrown, and Durbin did not turn around to look for the ball, just ran right through. LeBourne, and we talked about that on the play that Torres made on LeBourne. It was very similar early in the game. Yeah. Torres held up, stayed off of him, turned, and, and then kind of face guarded, turned and looked for the ball. That time Durbin just ran right into LeBourne, yeah. and it's going to be a first down by a yard, I do believe. It's a 15-yard penalty. Uh, I, I believe that is the uh, first time that there has been a pass first interference down. call here this afternoon. Fans and players have wanted a few. And haven't got it, and then uh, West Carroll gets it here on this play. Another 15-yard penalty. And it's going to be Buckholz on the carry, brought down quickly by number 22. That's Emmett Horaney, a gain of two for Buckholz. Second three from the 12 for the Thunder. Second and eight for the Thunder from the 12. Pitch out to Shinjin. They're going to spread it out. Shinjin went well past where he stepped out of bounds. A couple more yards. It's going to bring up third down and six.
36. Clock running, 2-0-something oh, <clears throat> left. 2 oh, one And a flag is down. <clears throat> Illegal procedure against West Carroll. That is not fair. I know. I can't I can't eat. That's why it's not fair. Oh my goodness. Some pulled pork nachos, folks. If we come back to West Carroll, I want to eat some of those. Man, a lie. They look good. You usually only see those at uh, pro sporting events, really. You I know. don't see it too much in at high school. So it's third and eleven now. Harrington's gonna roll left to the lefty, throwing into the flat. It's incomplete. Are you gonna show that a catch? Yeah, incomplete. I was going to say incomplete. I don't know why it took. I just heard somebody say, why did it take so long to call that? I kind of wondered the same thing. I was like, that didn't even look close to a catch to me, but it took them a while to decide whether it was or not. And then the funny thing was is it wasn't that good incomplete. It was just no, arms out. No, it was out. kind of a nonchalant uh, But For, I believe they made the right call. They did. They came up with the right call. It's fourth and 11 from the 16. We're just outside the 15 here with 152 remaining. I formation. Harrington fakes the handoff to Townsend, goes downfield, left the right side, and it's going to be out of bounds. No catch. Turnover on downs to the Falcons. And the Falcons have a chance to retake the lead or actually take a lead. They've they only led at seven to eight or seven to nothing, and since then it's been all West Carroll. Leading anyway. Well, I guess it was 10-7, wasn't it? Yes. So it was 7 nothing, 8-7 West Carroll, 10-7 Falcons. Then it was 15, I can't even remember, 14-10. It was 14-10 because they didn't get the two-point conversion. And then it was 20-10. Now it's 20-17. to And the Falcons are getting the ball back. This is a good one, folks. It's going to be good down the stretch. Just tell your friends what you're watching and where you're watching from. Falcons have the ball first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Handoff to Durbin. Durbin's going to go for a gain of three. Was that Detweiler or Durbin? It was Durbin, right? Yes. Number seven? Yep. Yep, number seven. Second and seven from the 19-yard line for... The Falcons, as we approach the fourth quarter, 1-15 remaining in quarter number three. Hand off to Detweiler. Not much there this time. Stuffing it in the middle. Number 33 for West Carroll. I don't have a 33 on my roster for West Carroll. Oh, there he is. Colin, or Cole Harrell. Screwed me up because it goes 32, 34, 33. They must do the number system a little different up here in West Central Illinois or West Northwestern Illinois. Or maybe we just do it wrong in West Central Illinois. That's probably we more probably likely. We probably do it wrong down that's, at home. Yeah, that's probably true. A one-yard gain, third down and five. Hand off and stopped again after a short gain. It was Durbin. Durbin. A gain of... Two, it's fourth and three. Now, do you have the kahunas to go for it? Or are you going to try to just draw them off here? It's fourth and two. They're just drawing them off. Yep, drawing them off to go into the fourth quarter. Clock going to run out. It is going to run out. That'll be the end of the third quarter of play. I was looking at the referee. I thought it should run out, but you have to. Keep an eye when there's no play clock. You right. have to kind of keep an eye and check. So at the end of four quarters of play, a fourth and two, a big fourth and two coming. Are they going to punt from deep in their own territory or are they going to try to go for it on the Falcons? We'll find out. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH coverage of Illinois Eight-Man Association football. Working at MDH feels special to me because – I'm also from a small community. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we... At Western Illinois University, leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. 
our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back to West Carroll High School in Savannah, Illinois. It's the West Carroll Thunder and the FCW Falcons. Falcons have fourth and two at their own 23-yard line, and they look like they're coming out to go for it. Definitely As we start the like fourth it. quarter of play here, and this is possibly the ball game. It and it's close. close. It is close. Wes Carroll thinks they stopped them. There's no signal. They did stop them. Turnover on downs. Who was on the ball carrier? Was that, was that a sneak? I believe it was a sneak. Gain of one. First and goal, or first and 10 at the 25 of the Falcons for the Thunder. Shinjin the deep set back. He's going to take the handoff. He's going to be bottled up relatively quickly. A couple yard gain, maybe one. Durbin in on the stop. Also, Haraney and Simons, a gain of one for Durbin. Or not for Durbin, excuse me, for Shinshin. Second and nine, Thunder from the 23. Second down and nine, clock running, fourth quarter, 11-23. Hand off to Buckholz. Haraney on the stop again. He's going to have a better gain. He's going to be going to bring up third and very manageable. Looks like a gain of about five. I think it's going to be third and four. We'll see where they mark it here. Yeah, we'll give him four. Third and a long four. McGinnis the deep set back now. A little bit bigger back, a bruiser. See if he gets the handoff here. Harrington, he's going to give it to McGinnis, and he breaks a couple tackles. He'll have a first down. With 11, or with 10.40 remaining. From the 19. Actually, from the 20 down to the 12, an eight yard gain for McGinnis. Be first and 10 to the, at the 12. Thunder, hand off. Buckholtz trips up and is going to fall across the 10 yard line. Second down and six the after a gain in four. Second down and four from the eight. Clock running, 9.57. No hurry at all if you're the Thunder here. Up by. Two, or three, excuse me, already. Harrington's going to hand out to McGinnis. He's going to be dropped down in the backfield. A big play by the Falcons. Durbin is back there. Detweiler is back there. Also number 63, Aiden Radke. And those three defenders of two. deserve the recognition because, I mean, they were right there on the ball carrier for a big stop. Buckholtz brings in the play. Townsend will be the fullback, it would appear. Third and eight for the Thunder. Can the FCW Falcons get a second straight turnover and downs in their own end of the field by the Thunder? Buckholtz a deep setback. He's going to take the handoff. He's got some running room, and there's a hold. It's going to come back. doesn't matter what happens. There's a hold, and you saw it on the end of the line of scrimmage. It's not a touchdown. It's going to come back. There's a hold. At the end of the line of scrimmage, you could see the defender try to get away, and he reached one arm out and just couldn't get away. Yeah. And it's going to be a 10-yard penalty for the West Carroll Thunder. And from the 10 back to the 20, it's going to bring up third down and about 18. Sometimes you question whether it was actually a hole. That one was pretty obvious yeah. on the end of the line of scrimmage. But you don't get the touchdown. You do get to take a little more time off the clock. 
Got to be a glass half full kind of guy. 852, 850 remaining in the fourth quarter. Harrington under center. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got somebody deep. He's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to be bottled up. Ball's out. Loose. Picked up by a lineman. And who was that tackle? Who was the tackler on the floor? It was number 23. Simons makes the tackle. Slam and it's going to be fourth down. Malachi Lamb had the recovery of the fumble, and he, he, had, he had big boy six in his head as soon as he picked that puppy up. But Simons reached out and got one hand on an ankle and brought him down. It's no gain on the play. And it is fourth and a long ways. Worthy to have been on the table at the Last Supper. Head on back to the concession stand. Grab yourself some of that good pulled pork nacho action. Can they save some for us after the game? That's a better question. Eight eighteen remaining, and it's fourth and forever. Now you're not. I don't think you're going to punt here. They're going to they're going to go for I something think you big here. Give it a try here. Uh, you know, my question was: Are you going to try and you know you don't want to make a big mistake? Harrington's going to drop back to pass, throws over the middle. It's short and incomplete. He took a big hit by Detweiler, and it's going to be first and ten for the Falcons again at their own 25-yard line. But I'll tell you what: the Thunder defense on the last drive stepped up huge. If they can do that Absolutely one good. more time here and then the offense can get a first down or two, this one might be over. So this is going to be a big defensive stand coming for the Thunder and in turn the offensive possession of the year coming for FCW right here. I formation, read the wide out to the near side. Jones under center. Handoff goes to Durbin, and he's hit again at the line of scrimmage. They had a little success running the ball in the middle of the formation early in this half, but they have not had much success in the last drive and a half or so. It's going to be a gain of a short two, long one. Call it a one as well. 76 yards on 15 carries for Durbin. Reed on the left side this time. Hand off to Detweiler. He's got a lot of room. He pulls the stiff arm. He's dragged down from behind, and they're going to call a horse collar tackle. I, I thought Laborn that's what was going to happen. Made the, made the touchdown <laughs> saving tackle from the 24 to the 50. So it's a 26-yard run for Detweiler, and then it's going to be a 15-yard penalty on top of it. Oh, they're going to wave, wave it, off. it off? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Man, they get lucky on that one. Flag will be waved first and 10 for the Falcons from the 50. I'm telling you, they get lucky on that. That would look like I'd like to see that on replay. That looked like the definition of a horse collar tackle right there. Yeah, I, whenever I saw it, I <clears> figured that it was going to happen. Then the flag came out, but they wave it off. Falcons with the ball on the 50. A 26-yard first down run for the Falcons. Hand off to Detweiler again, and now this time nothing doing up the middle. Actually, it was Durbin as the, the fullback that time. Very little, if anything, on the play. Among others was Logan Thulin. Thulin on the stop. No gain. He gained about a court football length, so it's no gain on the play for Durbin. Ruddy's going to go out, coming in for the is Detweiler. So he'll go back to the fullback position, I would imagine. Actually, they're going to go power formation to the left. Jones is just going to run it. He's got some running room this time around the left side. He's across the 35. He might have stepped out at about the 35. Nope, they're going to give him a little more than that. 16-yard gain for Jones. Nearly doubling his yardage for the 
game. He's got 16 or 33 yards on eight carries, another first down. And it's first and 10 from the 34 yard line with 6.17 remaining. Jones under center. Hand off to Detweiler up the middle. He breaks a couple tackles. He's going to go for a gain of five. Detweiler, the ball carrier, short gain on the play. Second down and five coming for the Falcons as no real hurry here, Brandon. They just need to get the ball in the end zone, right, or get into field goal range, I guess. But really, you want to get a touchdown here. And if you take all the time to do that, that's even better. Yes, I Time management is key right here, under six minutes remaining here in regulation, actually. Here's Jones going to hand off to Durbin. He sheds one potential tackler, and he's going to be down near the line to gain. Give him four, and it'll be third down and one. We'll bring up third and one for the Falcons. Durbin, 16 carries for 113 yards, and... Talk thinking about that probably specifically the second time out of the game yeah. of the second half is going to be called by the Thunder with 5.26 to go here in the fourth quarter. This one turning into a good one here. As it's, I believe that's 5.36, right? 5.26. 5.26 remaining. As it's going to be third down and one for the Falcons. You know, I'm not going to – I said last night, St. Thomas Moore drove down the field against St. Anne, and they had it first and 10 at the 12 with 49 seconds left. Their first pass was in and out of the hands of a receiver at about the three- or four-yard line, and I said it wasn't that big a deal because you still had plant time, you know. You still had time and you still had plays, and they ended up going backwards from there on out. So uh, maybe it wasn't a huge deal, but it ended up – maybe being a momentum changer. So yeah, the Falcons well Falcons are third and one here. They want to get this first down. And in Ooh. the backfield, they're not going to get it. What's the play? Who's the player? Townsend's going to get the stop in the backfield. It was Durbin on the carry. He loses one. Fourth down and a short two for the Falcons now. And this very well could be the ball game. Under five minutes to go, 4.56. They'll have three timeouts if they can't get this down, first down. Jones under center. Hand off to Detweiler. He breaks a couple tackles. He's going to lean forward. And he's going to get it. I do believe yeah, I he believe got the so. first down. It is a two-yard gain. They needed to make it a three-yard gain. It's first and ten Falcons at the 23-yard line. 13 carries for 78 yards for Detweiler. And it's 422 remaining. The clock is running. Every slow first down, Brandon, makes this more important of a drive. It, uh, yes. And there's a handoff to Durbin. He's going to be pushed forward. He's going to be close to a five-yard gain. Down around the 18-yard line, it would appear, maybe the 17 even. He's going to go for a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and five. Jones, ball carrier, short gain in the play, second and five Falcons from the 17. Second down and five for the Falcons, down to 342 remaining. Durbin again, and oh, in the backfield for the Thunder, the big man. Who is it? Number 74, I believe. We'll wait yeah, till he 74. gets up. It is big number 74, Logan Thulin, the 6'2", 270-pound senior. Drops Durbin in the backfield for a loss of one. It's third and six. 74 was right there, just the wall, and... Uh, the running back had no chance at all. He got through the line of scrimmage in a hurry. A great move got him free, and he made the play. 3-0-2 remaining. It's third down and six for the Falcons at the 18-yard line. Make it the 19-yard line. Fake handoff. Looking for Reed. He's going to roll with it. Gets to the corner. He's going to have a first down. It may be first and goal. We see where they mark it. It's right at the 10-yard line. He's out of bounds. 
So it will be first and goal at the 10. So a gain of eight for Jones. He's got 41. It's first and goal at the 10 with 2.48 remaining here in the fourth quarter. So they got four downs to get it in the end zone here. Or they're in Decker field goal range. Hand off to Durbin. Durbin might go. No, he bounced it back inside instead. He'll go for a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and goal from the five. I thought if he downed that outside, Brandon, he might have a touchdown. Yeah, and uh, you're speaking of uh, possibly kicking a field goal. They, they could because, as we have stated a couple times here in the game, very good field goal kicker, but – that would just tie the game and send us into overtime. Yeah, and the wind is blowing really hard across what would be Decker's face from left to right here at this end now, and the wind is picked up. They want a touchdown. They want the win. Detweiler with the run. It's third down. He might have gotten a yard. Get us in on the stop. No gain to speak of on the play. Third down and goal at the five. We'll bring up third and four for the Falcons. Ball still on the four. Oh, well, they're saying it's on the four, so we'll give him a yard. Third and goal at the four-yard line. Under two minutes remaining now. The Falcons are putting all their eggs in this basket right here. Here's Jones. Third and goal at the four. Handoff, Durbin. Going to be brought down short of the goal line. A gain of two. Now. Here's the play of the game right here. One thirteen left. Coach Reed's probably going to let the play clock run all the way down and then going to take a timeout. We'll wait for the official to start. He's looking at his watch over in the end zone underneath the goal post. The official that is the timekeeper for the play clock. We're down under a minute at 52 seconds. There's the 10 second. He's going to start waving the arm at 5, 4, and there comes the timeout with 48.9 seconds remaining. A timeout on the field charged to the Falcons, their first timeout, but at this point, Folks, it doesn't matter. They've got one play to get a touchdown or a field goal to tie. Now, you're on the road. How big a kahunas do you have? And go for the touch <laughs> go for the touchdown and the win, or do you go for the field goal? If this was two minutes or three minutes left, you'd probably go for the tie. I think if you go for the win here, or maybe two or three minutes left, you go for the win and then you hold them, you hope. Maybe here you go for the tie and play the extras. I have no idea what Coach Reed and the staff are thinking about I, over there. I do not want to be in that situation. I, I totally agree. Um, I think we are going to uh, see them go for the win here. I, that's what I'm going to guess. I could be totally wrong. Nope, Decker's out there. No, see? he's not. Nope, he's not. Durbin, the deep setback. This is it. All the marbles. The IHFA playoff win on the line. Jones is going to take the snap. He's going to hand off the Detweiler. He's not going to get in. They're going to push. His knees were down. He's not in. One-yard gain and the Thunder hold. And the clock is still out. Oh, they got the clock stopped now. With 38.9 seconds left. The Thunder have it. First and 10 at the one yard line. And, and I can. They're asking for more time to be put up on the clock, I believe. I can tell you that my theory on not kicking that field goal is because of the crosswind that's going on right now. There is a strong, strong crosswind going from left to right. The, la the field goal that he did kick down there did not get very far off the ground, and it was not a great kick. Harrington, they're just probably going to sneak this, I would imagine. They're a player short. They don't have a timeout. Buckholz is going to run in, so they're going to have to uh, 
hustle this play to the line of scrimmage. I would imagine it's nothing more than a Philadelphia Eagles tush push here as they're going to just push it forward from the one-yard line. The Falcons are going to try to stop it. They're not going to, and it's going to be a run for Harrington out to the four, a three-yard game. Timeout on the field, charge to the Falcons. They only have two, which is not enough to stop the clock unless they can get some sort of a fumble. They're going to need a miracle here. 20 to 17 is likely going to be the final, but man, oh, lie, what a finish to this one. Absolutely, a classic high school Round one playoff game in my view of this game here this afternoon. Yeah, this is an instant classic. There is no doubt about it. And uh, for both the games that I've covered this weekend, both of them have had the chance to be a winning by the visiting team on their last possession. Townsend on the carry, number 24. Connor Townsend, no gain. That will be the final play of the game. The Falcons know they can't, they can't. Oh, they are going to take a timeout. Falcons are going to take their last timeout. And I don't blame them. I mean, you got to take the timeout here, right? You got to take the timeout and uh, try to get some sort of a play to happen. Maybe you can get a fumble. Maybe you can get a bad snap. Maybe you can make something happen. And uh, we'll see if any of that does happen. You know, you look back through the history of football and the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Giants and some similar to this. Yeah. Same thing. The Jets lost on the butt fumble. I mean, things happen, right? Stuff can happen. And they could just take a knee here. They don't need to hand it off, but we'll see what they do. Harrington does take do. the knee, and that will bring it to an end. The Falcons can't stop the clock. It's fourth down, but they were a timeout short. And the Thunder, in their first year in the I-8FA, get a victory in the I-8FA playoffs, and they will be going to Polo next week to face the Marcos. You'll be able to watch that game on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH as well as the celebration has begun for the Thunder. As you see the West Carroll flag being brought up in front of the grandstands by the cheerleaders, and this one comes to an end. And what a heartbreak for the Falcons. Their season comes to an end at six and four, and the Thunder improve to eight and two and they will work, live to play in week 11 against Polo. That game will be at Polo. Time to be decided. What a great game here this afternoon as the Thunder defeat the Falcons. As we get uh, a little time here, as we will uh, take a couple minute break, play a commercial, and then we'll be back, well, hopefully with some coaches, but we'll have some final stats as well. You've been watching TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Oh, welcome back. We're here with Adrian McGregor. Welcome to halftime. Adrian, you're Patrick a home guy. Office, and, uh, yes. So you're living in Macomb, working at MDH. Yes. The guy running What's your the position? Board right now. Kind of so crazy. The I don't know if you could get a much higher title running here at the hospital. board behind the scenes. I have about 120 employees that roll up in my other than our president and chief executive for the organizational chart. Bill Murdoch, but we really appreciate easy Bill helping us out. Um, yeah, he's, uh, so I have a great group of department directors that work for me. So areas like 
radiology yeah. and lab and physical good. therapy and I tell you what, Bill has done a fantastic job. You know, uh, those are kind of the main uh, areas just that how my good way. And then on the support was, side, worked with them for the last pretty much five all years things prior with as our the, chief financial the plant, officer, the facilities, and when he was promoted to our chief executive officer, all of that rolls up. All excited about it. I think everybody. I you never uh, am bored, <laughs> and you know, I have plenty to do every to do day. So I just sometimes it feels like you I just know, need more daylight than I need work. The world they live um, the but this is a great organization, members. and you got somebody here I work with some of the best what they're people doing. A in this community. And I'm, I'm proud of great that. Job. Mostly he proud of the all that they are and all that they do, and the employees what they contribute to the organization. We have a great we. We've well, got a lot of bright new things that um, caught my attention. Bright future, a lot of great things. That There's been a lot of construction well, going on, so you've I had a lot to deal with. Maybe we could hit on that. Sure. But I think right. I don't know that in any of the times that I've done these interviews, the we've talked about also embedded in what the community keeping the facility clean. Yes. Absolutely. With my job, I do a lot of heroes of this place, right? Because if any place needs to be clean, yes, one of the first conversations. How how important and how much role goes into you said keeping the hospital clean. I, want to get out in the well, I can tell you a tremendous amount of effort that. is uh, gone made at keeping the facility clean. And just to give you an idea of the complexity CEOs, of that, um, just talking about we have 14,000 we visits together? Is there a year in our together? emergency department, for involved. instance. There's a lot of Everybody that comes to the emergency department may is most likely having a bad moment of their day or could be a game changer for their year or even beyond. And so... That we um, are obviously, well, that high volume that equates to forty or fifty patients a day. Um, you gotta have a, a clean place for every patient coming in, hour by hour, minute by minute. And so that area just alone has to be kept clean. But then when you expand out, to, we have approximately eight hundred thousand square feet that needs to be kept clean throughout the entire hospital. We do have a lot of uh, a lot of employees engaged in that area. Jimmy Rogers actually oversees that area and then some, and so he has put together a team uh, within our environmental services department to ensure cleanliness within the four walls of the hospital alone, but then also partners with several independent contractors that uh, work on some of our business uh, buildings or our physician buildings in uh, other clinics that we have that aren't even located in Macomb. And so he and I have worked closely together over the past three years on this. And I think we just got to keep looking. It was a struggle during COVID for sure because you want to ensure that every area is clean, not only daily, but at times within every hour, if not. We want to look ahead. And so it is a valiant effort. Um, it's so important going on in that Medicare right watches so if you get for too far any ahead, type of hospital-acquired you infection what you're, what right that could be picked up from the so hospital. So our job is to stay clean, keep term. clean, um, and be even cleaner and than like mom said, or grandma would ever want you we to have. So we want to so be a lot more than washing. We've been here. It, it, it really is, and hand washing is is part of that as well in our infection control department. Years Who would have thought that within healthcare, that keeping your hands cleaned every hour, every day, after every and even during patient interactions could be a game changer um, with uh, preventing further infection? Well, as you just talked about, uh, our clinical expansions, as you said, Monmouth, our MDH Monmouth Clinic, uh, Convenience Clinic, Sports Med and Rehab. Uh, we got great staff up there, and I think that's a common theme. I know Bill talks about this a lot. I 100% on board with this too. I agree 100%. I, th I would think you'd ask any of our staff members, they would say that we got a great team right now. We do a great job working together. And I think that's how we can play to our strengths to help grow. You talked about the community pharmacy. Uh, we're excited when that starts coming online and how we can best serve our community. A um, lot of convenience. Uh, you know, I think one thing that we learned from COVID, people love convenience. We got our drive-through labs, and now you got our drive-through uh, community pharmacy. A lot of good things going on. Stay tuned. Uh, it's an exciting time right now in our organization. Well, I have some fun at baseball this weekend. Okay, we we were we're gonna have some fun. A uh, lot of fall baseball going on as we record this right before the start of high school football season. I know we're gonna have a lot of great football games. We want to wish all of our area teams the best of luck this year. We'll be right back with the second half right after this. 
And welcome back here to West Carroll High School in Savannah, Illinois. Man, we just saw a good one, folks. 20-17. to 17. The West Carroll Thunder get their first playoff win in their first season with the I8FA. This is an Illinois eight-man football association presentation of I8FA football playoffs here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Unofficial stats for you today. First for the, the Flanagan Cornell Woodland Falcons, who finished the season at six or seven or six and four, excuse me, seven, six and four. They finished as a team with unofficially 46 carries for 243 yards. Durbin had 21 carries for 123 yards. Detweiler had 15 carries for 80 yards. Jones, nine carries for 41. Ruddy had a carry for a negative one yard. Hey, Coach, when you're done in there, can you come out here? Absolutely. Thank you. And the Jones was 0 for 2 with an interception. Ruddy threw a 29-yard completion for a first down in the third quarter. And Reed had that completion for 29 yards. Connor Reed, one of the seniors, had one catch for 29 yards. Ruddy is a junior, the 6'3", 175-pound running back, defensive back, through that pass. As the Falcons and the seniors getting lined up at the 50-yard line. Taking a little time for the Falcons who have their season come to an end here today in truly heartbreaking fashion. We'll tell you more about that here in a few minutes as we wait for some coaches hopefully to come up and talk to us. I know that Sestacia will be up. He's in the booth talking on the radio right now. The Falcons seniors going to walk off the field hand in hand and arm in arm, I should say, as is tradition. Their kicker, Connor Decker, 5'11", 150-pound senior is one of them. He's a good one. And uh, I'm sure he's one that wishes he'd had a chance at that tie rather than going for the win, but you cannot blame Coach Reed for going for the win on the road. Not sure if Coach Reed is going to find his way up to talk to us or not. I hope that he does. He's been a great supporter of TSSR, and we greatly appreciate him and spending his time talking to us uh, throughout the season. The Falcons have a team that uh, they should be very proud of, but the, but the Thunder got the win today, and they have a team that they should be very proud of, a team that had struggled in 11-man, hadn't won many football games recently, and they came to 8-man, and they made a statement, and they get a playoff win, a very emotional win for them, uh, equally emotional probably for them in the win. For the Thunder of West Carroll, 41 carries for 189 yards. Pickard Shinchin had 15 carries for 76 yards. Buckles had 13 carries for 92. Townsend had 7 carries for 13. McGinnis, 3 carries for 9. Harrington actually 4 for negative 2, but I don't ever count the knee downs. Harrington was one of seven with an interception and one completion for 27 yards. LeBourne had that one completion for 27 yards. So both teams completed just one pass a piece here today. Is that wind is just really picking up now? It has. Maybe it's because all the fans left from, that were sitting in front of us. I don't know. Maybe they were blocking the wind, but it's really windy up here now. Uh, I'm trying to get the sheet turned over so I can tell you the scoring plays here today. First quarter, first score of the game came on a 49-yard run on the first series for the Falcons by Durbin with 10-18 to go in the first quarter. Decker had to kick. It was 7-0. Buckholtz then scored on a drive by the Thunder, a 13-yard run with 4-10 remaining. Townsend got the two-point conversion, and the Thunder led 8-7. Decker then in the second quarter with 2.32 remaining, kicked a 27-yard field goal from the end to your right on the TV screen. It was 10-4 for the 
Falcons. Then Buckholtz scored as they drove down the field. Buckholtz scored with 9.3 seconds remaining. A two-yard run, the pass failed, and at the half, it was 14 to 10. Both teams scored in the third quarter, then neither team scored in the fourth. 11.46 to go on the opening kickoff. West Carroll scored on Buckholtz 75-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. The run failed again, and it was 20 to 10. 7.59 to go. The Falcons answered right back on a 14-yard run by Durbin. Decker had to kick, and it was 20 to 17. And both teams threatened several times, Brandon, but never were able to get it into the end zone. And the the Falcons might have had another chance to kick another field goal, but I will say that the wind was probably two or three times hard, blowing two or three times harder at the time at the end of the fourth quarter as it was when he kicked that field goal in the second quarter. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we as uh, broadcasters, we didn't know what was going to happen there at the end. If they was going to go for the field goal, if they was going to go for the win, and they went for the win, and Mount <coughs> West Carroll uh, ended up s- sticking strong and stopping them, what, at about the one-yard line. Heartbreaking loss for Flanagan, but you know what? They played their hearts out. It was a fun and entertaining game. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It was a fantastic football game here today. The defenses came to play. The offenses did some things. But I'll tell you what, it, as a whole, it was a very defensive-oriented game. There were some big hits. Uh, there were some strong tackles. They did a great job of spreading people to the sideline for the most part. I mean, it, it was good defense, especially there in the second half. Uh, absolutely. The Falcons turned the Thunder away two times in the fourth quarter at the 25 or further in to get a chance. They got a chance at the end of the third quarter, couldn't make anything happen in Thunder territory, and then it just it just kind of went, and then that last drive, man, it was a it was a fantastic drive for the for the Falcons. They got to first and goal at the 10, which is ultimately the worst place, right? Your first and goal at the 10, you can't get any farther away. Can't get any farther away than that. As our internet just fell off, but apparently it stayed connected, so we're going to keep going here. As I kicked the table, I'm surprised that didn't happen sooner, to be honest with you. I'm going to go down and see if it's actually still plugged in or not. It is not. So we'll get back on our stream here. The recording is still going. So we'll have the recording of Coach's interview, but we'll try to get the stream to work on our phone here as well. As we did lose internet for a split second there. Still waiting for Coach Sustacia to come out. Hopefully he will come out in just a few moments. We'll be able to uh, get him on. here before we end things today. As we try to wait for him, we'll take a break and we'll come back. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. And welcome back here. Coach, uh, 
Tell you what, that was a nail biter, wasn't it? Yeah, I expected no less. I expected no less. We seen how physical that team is. We like to play a little physical. So um, I knew it was going to be a tight game. From the very beginning, we told them we we're going to be battling back and forth. We might fall behind. You just got to keep playing the game. Uh, West Carroll, 11-man team, has struggled for several years. They get them into eight-man. They go get a coach that's coached some eight-man, under, understands it a little bit. So maybe the learning curve was moved forward faster than in some cases. But a team that had struggled so mightily in years past to come and have a year like this and get the first playoff. And what's it say about these kids? I, I, you know, I tell the kids when I first met them, when I got hired on and I looked at the kids, and, and I brought this up, boys and girls. Um, the talent's here. I, I, I can't speak on the past. All I do is talk about the future. But I did, when I noticed, I said, oh, my, I got talent. We got, we got something, you know. Even, even when I look at the girls, uh, volleyball, basketball, all our programs, we have a lot of talent here. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, we get everything going. Um, we see it with the boys. Just a little hard work. You put in that work, you get results. Uh, this game, your guys' offense didn't do a lot, but you did enough, right? <laughs> I mean, and sometimes that's that's okay, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we were trying to open up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but um, I think it's the nerves. You know, playoff game and stuff, you know, fumbling the ball a little bit here, a little bit there. So uh, sometimes you just got to keep it simple. And you keep it simple and just keep going, and that's what we did. We kept it simple. Um, penalties killed us. Uh, it has all year. I've told everybody, if we can clean that up, man, we can we can compete with anybody. Seven penalties for 60 yards, and some of them came at key times. That, when it gets you behind the yardstick, it's hard, isn't it? That, that seems to be the case. You know, it's <laughs> that seems to be the case for us. It's funny if people say that, right? But it, no penalty is ever good, But and they all come at inopportune times. You know, Just some, I suppose, are worse than you others. Know, holding on a touchdown, um, we get on the first down, we start a, we just get a defensive stop on four, and then we turn around and we're on first and 20, you know, uh, so. But it's just something that they got to learn, you know, just more and more discipline, you know, focus on what your responsibility is and just get it done. Well, you're going to play Polo next week. Yes. At Polo. Yes. You played them here the first time, right? Yes. So uh, you've seen them. You know what they have to offer. They're a good football team. They're a very, very good football team. Very fo good football program. Um, you know, I, like you said, I've been in um, eight man for a few years. And when you think of eight man football, that's one of the top two or three teams that you think about. Uh, we're going to go out there. We're going to, you know, we're going to give them hell. You know, uh, the thing is we can't back down. So we're going to come at them and, and see what happens. And, and that's the thing, right? The kids have their first playoff win. You've built the program to the point of that. Now you can say, hey, look, we, we've done what everybody thought we couldn't do maybe twice. You got had a good season. Then you got your first playoff win. I don't think anybody thought you were going to do that. I mean, at the start of the year. And then, hey, if we've done these two things, why not just add one more to the, to the hat, right? You know, and, and uh, we say that. You know, we, we talk about that. You know, uh, I really think if I had these kids a couple more years um, before this year, those seniors, yeah. um, I think you guys would be talking to us about running for the state. Um, a lot of it is just simple stuff, discipline stuff. Um, but uh, we got, we're got we going to have a good program. We are, our, our junior high uh, middle school won the, the conference championship in the eight man. Uh, so, yeah, we got it's up, it looks good for us in the future. Uh, you know, you come to a program like this, and I know wanting to be a head coach is part of it. When you got here, you said you knew you had to. But what was it that made you say, I want to come take that challenge of taking an 11-man team and making them an eight-man team? The um, – the, the big thing is I'm from Texas. Um, I did kind of shop my ride myself around, talking to some few people. I didn't see any interest. Um, so um, I figured when I applied for this job and they offered it to me, I said to myself, you know, if you really want to be a head coach and if you really think who you, you think you are, this is the opportunity. And I think, you know, the good Lord had brought me over here, to be honest with you, because um, they opened it up at the last minute um, due to some, um, some people uh, uh, Coach um, Jeff Woodside mm -hmm. and some of them were saying, let's just open up and see what happens. And we had a former teacher here that was at Amboy that kept pushing me to get it. So I applied for it, came up, prayed on it, and uh, it's probably one of the best decisions I made. Coach, I'll let you get out of here and go celebrate a little bit. Not much celebration time, though. you got to get ready for polo. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to give them this day, but we're getting ready to work. I'm going to give them this day. I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you got video to watch, right? Yes, sir. All right, Coach, congratulations again. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. As Coach Reed is finding his way up here, and we'll get him on the headset next.
You want to do here first? Uh, do you want it? Are you guys waiting for him too? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Um, Coach, uh, I said uh, before that fourth down play at the goal line, I said, how big a kahunas <laughs> are there over there on the sideline? On the road, you know, the wind blowing the way it was. You got perhaps the best kicker in eight-man football, and I don't think that's probably a doubt. He's right there if he's not the best. But the wind blowing so hard, did you really think you had a choice? I thought, you know, being on the road here, um, yeah, I, I do think we got the best kicker in eight, man. And, uh, it, and you know, I was talking with the coaching staff, I don't think I would have changed the play. You know, when I looked at, I called that timeout right before we went out there and I asked the kids, I said, what do you feel confident in? What do you want to run? And they said they wanted to run the dive with Eli. And when your team tells you that, I'll trust those guys to the day I die. And uh, we, we went with it and uh, unfortunately didn't get it. And in fact, I, I turned my back and started walking down the sideline. And I thought, I'm either going to listen to our crowd go nuts or their crowd go nuts. And unfortunately, their crowd went nuts. Yeah, you, you have some kids that have some heart, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. A great senior class. Great senior class, again. Uh, 11 awesome kids. You know, not only have my own son, but uh, that's playing. The other 10, I treat like my son, and I love them all from the bottom of my heart. You know, and they're, they are really good kids. Just just not good football players, good students, good good people. And uh, couldn't be prouder of them as a coach, being able to coach them over the last few years. and and watch them grow into young men that that uh, are going to do some really good things in life. Uh, some penalties at key, key times and and stuff like that. Talk to Coach uh, Sasha about that. It, it seems like you always say, oh, they come at team. Uh, every penalty is at a key time, it seems like, but some of them are worse than others, and, and both teams had some of those penalties today. Yeah, you know, and I, I thought the officials did a great job today, you know, and uh, one big one we had was that pass interference call, and and there was some contact there, and it, it, that was kind of a pivotal point of the game too. And it's one of those things, you know. We moved uh, Seth, the DB, um, our starting quarterback, the DB this week. Uh, you know, we had uh, one of our senior two-way starters. Uh, it came down with an illness, and uh, for Seth to have to to fill into that role, um, not only as good a job as he's doing as a quarterback for us this year, but to play DB in his first outing, he did a great job, and and uh, it's just one of those plays. I think it could have been called or not called. Yeah, you know, I want to talk about Torres. <clears throat> there was a play almost identical to that in the first half where he broke up a pass. That I wanted, it, you know, if, if it was NFL, they'd say it was a back shoulder throw. Really, yeah. just an underthrown ball. Yeah. Um, but he saw the receiver turn, and because maybe he's been more experienced back there, yeah. he he held up. Yeah, and then got a hand up, and then yeah. kind of tried to turn around and look for the ball, and that's what didn't happen at the other end. I thought. Yeah, yeah, and Jackson's come a long way as a junior for, and I'm glad he's only a junior. You know, the kid, he's uh, extremely coachable, and you just watch him get better every week, and uh, some good things are going to happen with him next year for us, and and he's he's a smart player, and and he's learned a lot for us this year. So Wes Carroll's proven a lot as a first year team in IFA, haven't they? They have. You know. I'm so, you know, as unhappy as I am that we lost, I'm happy for them just for small school football. You know, we were in that same boat a few years ago when we were, you know, had some winless seasons, 11 man. Our first year we were able to jump to uh, make the playoffs and talk about, you know, change around your program. More kids want to play, you know, wins bring kids out. And uh, happy for them guys to see that success they had this year. And, uh, you know, and, and good luck to them. They got a good team. They got a really good team. It was a good, I, We knew coming in it was going to be a good game. But uh, I'm happy that they could get their program turned around here, and hopefully he keeps that going in the right direction. So I've done two games, both of them defensive battles this weekend, and both of them huge hitting. This was a huge hitting game, and defense was key. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, de defense was big on both sides. And I went to our defensive coordinator, Coach Jackson, you know, uh, when we got that fourth down stop over here, and I said thank you for bailing out the offense when we went for it and fourth and short <laughs> didn't get it. And, uh, and we, you know, we put ourselves, I told the kids after the game, I said, you guys put us in a position to win the game, and that's all coach could ask. You know, we had the ball with less than a minute left inside the five, and, and that's what you ultimately, what, yeah, what it comes down what, to. That's what dreams are made that's of. That's what dreams made of, are made of. And then yeah. they got us in a position to win it. And, and um, you know, like I said, I'll call that play ten times, ten out of ten, so.
Well, Coach, I'll let you get out of here. I know the radio guys want to get you. So I appreciate you for all the support you've given us this year. And, uh, you know, if, since your coaching hat's off, if you want to hop on for a, a broadcasting game, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. Well, okay, I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, I thank you guys for what you're doing too. Uh, eight Man needs more coverage, and, and I know a lot of people back home are, are watching this and, and listening in, and, and you guys keep please keep doing the job you do. It's greatly appreciated. We'll plan on it. All right, thank, thank you, you, Coach. Good job. That's Coach Reed talking to us for a few minutes. That'll do it here from West Carroll High School in Savannah, Illinois. The final score, 20-17. to 17. The Thunder get the win over the Falcons. We'll be back next week with all four quarterfinal round games. So for Brandon, I'm Dwayne. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again very soon.